I, I want to talk to you about um, what was just previously mentioned, this urban air mobility. I want to talk about a world where everybody can fly anywhere and anytime. So, so why is that important? We live in, a, in an increasingly urbanized world. In actually 2030, um, there is predicted to be, uh, here we go, 5 billion uh, people living in city centers around the world. Now, that's of, of course, is a great thing. I'm a big believer in cities. Cities are hubs of innovation, creativity, arts, and, and really is, uh, in many cases, the centers of progress. But of course, also those cities bring their, their own challenges. Uh, having these uh, very large agglomerations means people have challenges where they live. Uh, the, the, the pathways to, to work, the, the, the daily commutes getting longer and longer. So um, on the one hand, it's an affordability question. On the other hand, it's of course also a traffic question. Um, in some cities like London, we've really gone back to the times of the horse carriage uh, and, and we're traveling at 16 kilometers per hour in order to get from one place to another. So how do you solve that? What are the, the, the ways to solve this? Is it really like more infrastructure? The reality is we are building less and less infrastructure. Be that in New York, in London, it's getting harder and harder to, to add more tunnels, to, to add more infrastructure, because the land is expensive. There is already a lot of infrastructure. The maintenance itself, the, the upkeep is getting harder. So, so what can you do? Of course, uh, there is going to be an in a continued investment needed, but what else? Uh, is it really flying cars, uh, the answer? Of course, I believe flying cars is probably more of a misnomer, and I think a flying car is probably a bad car and also a bad airplane. So how do I believe uh, does this urban air mobility need to look like? What are really the, the key things we need to get right? So rather than talking about flying cars, we're talking about connectivity. It doesn't matter where you are. You certainly don't want to have runways in order to, to get from one place to another. That's a terrible waste of time. So um, wherever you are, whether you're in a densely urbanized area, on a skyscraper, in a parking lot, or of course somewhere in the countryside, you've got to be able to take off and land vertically on, on a very small space. You also have to, to, to have a very fast connectivity. Urban air mobility makes it possible to go direct from one place to another. You, you don't have rivers and lakes and bay areas or, or, or mountains that are in, in the way. You can fly direct from A to B, be that over the traffic as well. So, so talking about a world where we have a different perception of, of distance uh, than, than what we have today. It's also a world that, uh, where we believe uh, that it has to be clean, right? We, we are seeing it on the ground. We are seeing the, the electrification of ground mobility. Doing urban air mobility, we cannot uh, add more, uh, more exhaust, more fumes to, to those ecosystems. But also it has to be quiet because noise is, is, a, is a form of pollution. And, and in order to do urban air mobility, you cannot add more noise. Like here in Zurich, this is one of the quietest cities I know. Obviously, people will not accept um, a lot of noise. Uh, and, and maybe in some places like Sao Paulo, of course, uh, it works already. But, but they, they're probably waiting for a solution to, to that problem. But also, it, it, it has to be responsible. So, so uh, do we really uh, think of, of more roads? I, I believe the answer is uh, no. We, we, you know, we have an existing infrastructure, but the, the answer isn't to, to add more, more roads to, to what we already have in the second grid and the third grid, if we have an alternative. And it, it really has to be for everyone. I, I believe uh, that the, the acceptance uh, when you only have part of the society that has access uh, within a city to, to fly around from A to B, it will be very, very difficult to, to, to have that collaborative stance and say, like, yes, we need this. Yes, let's make um, this infrastructure available. Let's, let's make the, uh, the, the space and the regulation available in order to do that. It's going to be, uh, in the early days, probably the price of a taxi. But long term, this type of transportation, flying uh, in cities, around cities, uh, in, in the near, near vicinity, is going to have the price of, of ground car transportation. So we're talking about everybody here in the room probably still owns a car. Over time, you're going to just order your rides uh, because it's going to be autonomous, uh, autonomous rides. But the, the possibility of, of urban transportation in the air is going to be at a very similar cost level. 
Uh, but it also has to be easy to use. So it has to be shared. Uh, and, and really, that's when, when you bring it all together, what do you need? Uh, we at Lilium, we're building uh, the first electric, fully electric VTOL vertical takeoff and landing air taxi. It is uh, what you're seeing there, um, an aircraft of a novel type. What you're seeing in the middle is roughly about the size of a car, so it seats uh, five people, and then it has the ability to take off and land uh, like a helicopter or, or like a drone, but then also start flying forward with the wings attached. Now, sounds great, right? This is kind of the far future, and, and maybe one day we're going to have it. But the reality is that we've been flying since January 2017. This is our first full-scale two-seater prototype. Now it's just taking off uh, just outside uh, of, of Munich in, the Bav in Bavaria. Um, and you're seeing how, how it lifts, how it just uh, creates the, 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 the lift through the, the downward uh, push from, from the engines. And at this point in time, what you're seeing, it, it actually does uh, what we call transition into wingborne flight. Transition aircraft and transition flight is one of the most difficult maneuvers you can do in aviation. Because what happens at this point is that the wings are slowly starting to, to create the lift and, and, and at the same time you have to control very, very diligently that, uh, that forward motion in order to, to really um, stay in the air and, and transition into that forward flight. But also it's a very fundamental difference to, to let's say, drones or, or helicopters because instead of uh, staying in the air just with the, the rotating propellers, you're starting to use the wings and, and the, the lift that, uh, that it creates. And it's about a tenfold difference in the energy consumption. So, so that's what makes it possible that this aircraft can fly 300 kilometers at 300 kilometers per hour um, on, on a battery that is comparable to, to, to one of the larger um, e-cars that, that is out there. And it's really that, that wingborne lift that I can do. Um, it can also, of course, maneuver very slowly. So, so these types of aircrafts for the future, um, of course, you can imagine have to, in, in an urban setting, be able to maneuver uh, in between very small spaces, maybe fly very closely behind each other. But different to, to an aviation, to a normal aircraft, they don't have to maintain uh, 200 kilometers per hour in speed in order to not drop out of the sky. So the team went about at the time to, to create what is the, the, the simplest form of flying? What are maybe the things that we don't need? What is the rethink of, of aviation? Um, what are all the things we might be able to, to leave away? And, and what you're seeing is an aircraft that doesn't have a tail, doesn't have a rudder. Uh, it, it looks in some ways very different to what everybody else here is, is used to. But it created that, uh, that simplicity from, from the start of like how do we create a systems engineering that uh, enables us to, to achieve the, the efficiency in order to do the takeoff and in order to, to get enough uh, um, uh, efficiency out of the batteries in order to, to start and, and land, but then also uh, to fly forward. And a lot of it depends on, um, on the electric engines. There are 36 engines in there. Um, one of the, the key elements is that there's only one single moving part in those engines. But also we believe, uh, as you can see, it's a ducted fan. So, so it's, uh, it's the, there is an encasing in the engine. And there's a very important safety element to that. So of course, um, if you have a bird flying in there, and, and if you have open, open props or um, uh, open, fast-moving parts, of course, they fly anywhere. And, and one of the things that the, these engines bring, bring about is that, of course, the, the passengers and the people around are going to be safe. And that safety, that was from the very beginning something that, that is industry defining and will have to continue to be for uh, urban mobility in the air to take off. So we have to aim to the same level that the commercial aviation has. Commercial aviation is, is the safest mode of transport. Nobody here in this room and, and watching this talk uh, probably thinks twice to, to get onto an aircraft because uh, it's 70 years of history of making the safest uh, industry in, in transportation. And that's the same bar that, that we need to achieve if we want to fly over people's houses in, in densely populated areas. And for that, what you need to do is you need to, again, do the systems engineering. You need to, to build redundancy. You need to, to think very different about how you create such an aircraft that no single part can be a full cause of failure, that you have what we call redundancy and you will always be able to, to, to make it to, to your next point uh, in case something happens. 
And that's probably also one of the reasons you probably ask, well, why haven't we done this with helicopters? So, so of course, safety helicopters in their designs is as beautiful of an, of a, of a, an engineering uh, machine they are. They have a lot of uh, these single points of failures, and that makes it very expensive with the maintenance, uh, also in terms of the energy consumption. So um, they, they are not only less safe, but they're also much more, to, much more expensive to, to run and, and to use as every, everyday use. And then, of course, the noise. So, so helicopters are probably four or five times uh, louder than, than those novel type of aircraft uh, that will be electrically uh, propulsed um, in, in and around our cities. So what does that mean? It means that we are starting to talk about infrastructure in a different way. First of all, the infrastructure that in itself you need in order to create these, these landing pots, it's something that is going to go quadratic. So it's imagine every single additional landing spot that you're creating is going to connect to every other landing spot there already is. So, so different to, to probably roads or trains where you only connect to the next station as, as you grow your network, you can, have, you, you can very, very fast scale up such a transportation network and, and you don't need to have the connections in between. So you don't need to have the roads and, and, and tracks in between or, or maintain that. And that has very profound implications on how we can potentially live in the future, where you might build um, uh, new communities, how you can potentially live in, in a village that might not necessarily be in the city center, but you still uh, be able to be connected just as well as the people living next to the main station to the fast trains. Because all of a sudden, everybody can be at, at a very small investment, be connected at 300 kilometers per hour to, to everywhere else. So it's a, it's a fundamental rethink of, of how infrastructure um, can work in, in the future. So, so ask yourself, what is my radius of life? Am I in the future going to finish work? And then uh, very quickly, I'm going to be uh, enjoying the beauty of, uh, of Zermatt uh, uh, within half an hour travel time. So, in essence, we are talking about a different ecosystem. Um, it is not more roads, it is not more trains or, or traditional uh, aviation, but we are talking about a new level of, of ecosystem. It's going to be connected, I believe. Um, uh, there will be connections to, to autonomous cars, to, to, to ground mobility, to trains, to, to trams, but it has, is going to have its own ecosystem, how uh, we, everybody, can use it and, and get around with, with all of the different uh, aircrafts that are being produced. So thank you very much, and I'll see you up here. Thank you.